Namaste, creative yogis. How are you doing out there? Hope you're all having a gorgeous week. And I'm really enjoying this lunar energy flowing through us at the moment, working with the air element and celebrating our pranayama practices, really taking the time to really develop them. I think uh, with our yoga, obviously, it's so there's, it's, there's so much that we can work with. There's our, our asana practice, there's our pranayama, there's our meditation, um, you know, there's working with the chakras, there's, there's, there's working with um, uh, our food and all sorts of things. We can really approach our yoga from so many different angles. And I think what's so great about elemental yoga is that it helps us to, to focus you know, um, on one specific thing and work with that and develop that so that we get a clear idea and, and, and become experts um, in certain areas, you know. So at the moment, as I said, the focus is pranayama, working with our air element and understanding how therapeutic and healing it is just to do pranayama, you know, spending the time. If you've got a busy, busy day and you really don't have the time to give to you, um, you know, even 10 minutes of yoga on the mat, five minutes of pranayama is the equivalent of an hour's yoga practice, just so you know that. So while well, we're taking the time to learn these different techniques, and obviously once you've learned them, you'll have your favourites that you kind of gravitate to that are most effective for you. So today I thought I'd introduce pranay um, the pranayama practice which is called alternate nostril breathing. So it's understanding that we have these channels flowing through the body and crossing over at the chakras and they're called ida and pingali, these channels, and they go through the nostrils and up into the brain. And these channels um, need to be balanced, you know, they help us to balance our whole body. And so when you're doing this particular um, pranayama practice, you're rebalancing the chakras you're rebalancing your mind, you're rebalancing your energy because we have masculine energy and feminine energy in us, okay? So it's making sure those are balanced within us. So first of all, let's do a little bit of self-diagnosing. So <clears throat> just block off one nostril, doesn't matter which one, and breathe through the other nostril. Let's take an inhale. And then exhale, let's take your finger away. And then just swapping over. And exhale. So which side for you was more blocked than the other side? And there's no right or wrong answer. Just be honest with yourself. What side was, was, was a little bit more blocked? For me, it was actually my left side. So that makes sense because I've been having to be in my masculine side as I've been building my business. And it's obviously at the expense of being more nurturing, spending, just having space just for me, being more about receiving, that, that's the feminine stuff, being open to that, being still and peaceful. Um, so that's what, what that is telling me is that I need to do some more of that and you know, make sure I go more yin about things for a while and get back into balance. If it was your masculine side, the right side, that was out of balance, that's telling you that you need to take more action. You know, you need to be more dynamic about things. You need to be more forthright, maybe speaking your truth a bit more, maybe having clear boundaries, you know, that kind of thing, being very strong in yourself. So whichever side uh, was telling you it was out of balance, then, then there's, there's some kind of um, solution to that, you know, in how you kind of engage with yourself in the world. So, but also with, our, with this pranayama practice, what we're going to do is get that shift everything back into balance. So the way that we do this, it's very simple. We get our peace fingers, our peace fingers, and place them on our forehead, you know. And so our thumb is going to close off one nostril, and our, our ring finger is going to close off the other nostril, okay. So first of all, placing your peace fingers on your forehead, and we're going to use our thumb, we're going to close off the right nostril. And we're going to inhale through the left nostril. And you can close your eyes here and just focus on that breath. So again, starting with the belly and inhaling nice and deeply. Take a deep inhale. And then close off that left nostril. Open the right nostril and exhale really deeply and slowly. 
can use a, uh, your lovely ujjayi breath if you want to. And again, take an inhale through the right nostril, again starting with the belly, inhaling up. Close off that right nostril, open the left, and exhale through the left nostril. Mouth is closed when you're doing this breathing. You inhale through the left nostril. Close off the left nostril, open the right, and exhale. Inhale through the right. Close off the right, open the left, exhale. Inhale, left nostril. Close off the left, open the right, exhale. Inhale, the right nostril. Close it off, open the left, exhale. Last round, inhale up through the left nostril. Close it off, open the right, exhale. Inhale up through the right nostril. Close it off, open the left, exhale. And then just release your hands down to your knees and just go back to normal breathing again. A couple of deep breaths. eyes. How did you get on? How did you find that? It's a very simple one. Once you get into a flow with it, it's really obviously common sense and it's beautiful because you feel more balanced in yourself obviously after you've done it and it's also very grounded and centering I find as well. So if you're feeling quite anxious, it's a good one to do but really take your time, you know, because obviously with anxiety when you're blocking off nostrils that can feel quite stressful. So just navigate how you're feeling with that. And you know, I found when I was learning, there was I wouldn't completely block off some of my nostrils, you know, because I was feeling quite stressed about doing that. So I sort of half blocked off. So just do what you can and find your way with this breath, this, these pranayamas, because it is about being calm and centered amidst the breath. And it's finding your way to that, just like you're being calm and centered with your asana practice. And of course, the two things work together. So learning the pranayama separately from the asana can be quite helpful, you know, just to start to see how to be calm and not to stress <laughs> with self-breathing. Easier said than done. And you know, this this whole month has been great for me because I, I have I had a relapse with um, the um, with the pneumonia I had at the beginning of the year. So my breath has been quite constricted. And so just finding that space, you know, creating that space slowly but surely, kind of opening up the lung space again, has just been an absolutely amazing feeling for me. And not walking around all tight and sore, you know, it's just been brilliant. And I've been getting massages as well to help release the tension around the back, at the back of the lungs, because actually the lungs, most of the lung space is at the back. So it is worth getting a massage to help free that up a little bit for you as well. All right. Um, as far as the heart space goes, we will talk about that a bit more next week, about how to find your way into your heart space and how to um, listen, listen to your heart. You know, again, it's just something that we can learn how to do. So I'll keep that in mind and, and focus on that next week. <clears throat> so I'm going to choose your colour cards today. So I really like these cards because color, bringing color into your life, you know, can be really quite transformative. 
for a while there, I really focused on wearing colourful clothes, for instance, because I just got into a habit of just wearing black because of work. And it really made a difference to my mood, wearing different colours, adorning my body with the colours that I was kind of working with at the time, you know. So these colour color cards can help us to kind of think about bringing a certain colour into, into our daily life. So, and colour therapy is a whole thing, by the way. If you're interested, you can look into it and find someone who's a colour therapist who can work with you. Okay, so what do the creative yogis need to know right now? What do they need to know? Feels a little bit freer, by the way. Okay, let's see what creative yogis need to know right now. Ooh, indigo. What a beautiful colour. Improve your vision. Indigo. Isn't that a stunning colour? As I was saying, imagine having that around your, or wearing that colour. And of course, indigo is the third eye. That's the colour of the third eye. But it's so beautiful, such a beautiful choice. So let's see what indigo has to say for itself. Um, number 40. Indigo. Indigo helps with any illness affecting your head, eyes, ears or nose. So again, respiratory system, you know. It also treats mental and emotional problems and depression. Use indigo for problems with insomnia and for re releasing stress and tension. When visualised, indigo provides a sense of clarity and purpose. Wow. Visualise indigo rays to improve your vision and make your dreams a reality. Going back to this whole thing about this year being about manifesting your dreams. Maybe something is going on at the moment that's perhaps making things a bit cloudy for you. And so this is to clear all that away and help you see your way forward again. Focus on your eyes. Are they tired and heavy or light and grey? Imagine indigo light penetrating your eyes, finding any dark spots in your field of vision and just dissipating them. Place your hands on your eyes and gently hold them there for a few minutes, allowing your eyes to relax completely. Visualise something in the future that you would like to create. Then freeze it as if it were a beautiful painting. Now, place it in an indigo bubble and allow it to float into the middle of the world, shining its energy from there. Say, Divine Intelligence, please allow what I have seen in my vision to manifest in the perfect time and in the perfect way. Beautiful. It's really supportive. It's lovely. It's interesting that's coming up now. So this idea of cupping the eyes is something we do in yoga, actually. It's a great way to help heal the eyes and work with helping to release any tension around the eye area. But yes, this idea of, I like that idea of imagining your life as a painting, you know, your, your vision, your dream as a painting. And then surrounding it with that beautiful indigo light and then just setting it free. You know, let it manifest when it's ready. Sometimes we get impatient or we can't see a way forward. So sometimes it's about just trusting trusting that in divine timing things will come together and that's a lovely one so let's choose your intention card for the week so i talked about these ages ago last year and yet before i can't remember when i was talking about it with you guys creating your own intention cards and i i did a lot i posted up a lot of these intentions and i still do it um, in my dailies, my Instagram dailies, I put up intentions with my little yoga sequences that I put together for you guys. So collect them, choose the ones that resonate with you and create your own cards. It's a nice creative way to support your journey. Okay, so what do the creative yogis need to know right now? Let's choose one for you. There we go. Follow your dreams, they know the way. <laughs> Uh, I love serendipity. 
follow your dreams, they know the way. They, they sure do. How beautiful is that? What a nice way to finish this lovely little message this week. Um, keep, keep tuned in to Instagram and Facebook. That's where I kind of go into more detail about various things that I'm talking about. So yeah, that's it for me today. Have a lovely week. Namaste, Kalevi.